Welcome to Sunday Morning Meditations, beaming from St. Margaret of Antioch in Belmont and St. Jerome in Gonzales. I'm Canon Ronald Branch, priest in charge of the parish, welcoming you to Sunday Morning Meditations for this Sunday as we take our readings from Proper 22. Let us pray. O God, the lover of unity and author of peace, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of the enemy, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversary. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rest of the past night and for the gift of a new day with its opportunities of pleasing you. Grant that we may so pass its hours in the perfect freedom of your service, that at evening we may again give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Colic for Proper 22 Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and meditations of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
the lesson is taken from Job chapter 1, verse 1, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. There was once a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. One day, the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, skin for skin. All that people have they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well, he is in your power, only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a potsherd with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. The word of the Lord. Psalm 26. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in possession around your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with those who thirst for blood, whose hands are full of evil plots and their right hands full of bribes. As for me, I will live with integrity. Redeem me, O Lord, and have pity on me. My foot stands on level ground. In the full assembly, I will bless the Lord. The epistle is taken from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, chapter 2, verses 5 to 12. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, 
having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels. But someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them or mortals that you care for them? You have made them a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God for whom and through whom all things exist in bringing many children to glory should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to St. Mark chapter 10, reading verses 2 through 16. Glory to Christ our Savior. Some Pharisees came and to test Jesus they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then, in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Christ our Lord. Today I want to reflect on thoughts out of the first chapter of Job. Recent scholarship has said to us that Job is the oldest book in the Bible. It is acclaimed that place in the Bible because it's believed that the book of Job was even before Genesis. What does the book of Job say to us about life? What does the first chapter in this book invite us to observe? From our readings, we see that God is speaking to Satan, who has appeared among some angels, and is saying to God that if he should take away some of the blessings that he had given to Job, Job will dismiss God as this mighty power. So God says, you can put him to the test because in my eyes, he's true of heart, he's righteous. This is God saying how he regarded Job. And this is the devil, Satan, saying if you took away all the good things that he had, he will curse you. And so Job is put to the test on the condition, because God says to the devil, the one condition we have 
you must not lift one finger against him. So the test begins. Job knows nothing about, about this. All this is playing out in his life. To begin with, he had seven sons and three daughters. He had many flocks of camels and sheep. Much livestock. All these things Job had. And God considered him a man who was in a right relationship with him. A righteous man. So that when the test begins, Job loses all his livestock. And while that is being reported, Job loses all his children. Ten children. All dead in one day. While that is going on, Job loses his health. He has sores on his body from head to toe. This is Job, the righteous man of God, facing up to these trials. What does Job do? How is he to handle these things? How are we on this journey, faced with adversity from time to time, to handle what comes our way. Many have asked, why? And there seems to be no answer as to why these things happen. Job did not question God. Job accepted what came his way. Was he downcast? Of course he was downcast. If you lost your ten children in one fell swoop, if you lost all your livestock because his animals were his riches, if you lost your health because he had sores all over his body, and I dare say if you lost your wife because his wife was there on the sidelines saying to him, curse God and die. And add to that, when we read on in Job, if you lose four friends who by their utterances more enemies than friends because they blamed him all the way for all that he was going through. This is what Job faced. But Job remained steadfast, understanding and expressing that understanding in the words, I know that my Redeemer liveth. He said to his wife when she said, curse God and die. He said, God has been good to us. God has blessed us with many things. What if we have some trials at this time? Should we curse God? What Job is going through is what we go through in our lives in different ways. We may not have all these trials coming together to shake us. They may be spread out 
over some years. Yet we ask, why? Why me? Why now? What have I done wrong? Sometimes Almighty God puts us through these trials to see how we'll, we will emerge from it. We who say that we are in Christ, He tests us with these trials. And in the desert of the trials, there's an oasis of comfort that comes to us from the still small voice, the voice that reassures us of his presence. There's a man by the name of Spafford who went down to the port to see his wife and children off to a vocation. And while he's there, he gets the news that the stock market, because he was a stockbroker, has crashed. And he begins to count his losses. In a couple of hours' time, he gets yet another setback. All his children have drowned in an accident on the sea. His wife has survived. That man, Spafford, sat down and wrote for us one of the most beautiful hymns that we'll sing. When peace like a river attendeth my soul. His words are, it is well with my soul. It was in that hour or in that frame of time and movement that the words came to Spafford to express it in song it is well with my soul Job took his trials knowing that God did not desert him and if you were to read the whole book of Job you will see that at the end of it, God returned his blessings manifold, many times more. What does this say to us? For well, sometimes through one trial, we are about to give up. We are about to give in. We are about to surrender. Or they say, no. Baptized in Christ, we have a vocation to live out our lives knowing that God is with us every step of the way. And that is why we have to be close to God at all times. We must not only look for Christ when there is crisis. Do not be a part-time lover. Be in union with Christ from day to day. Read the word of God. Reflect on it. Be strengthened by it. For as day follows night, we will all have our different trials. Maybe not accumulated as Job had. but trials nonetheless. And this book is written to give us the strength and comfort to know that in the midst of our trials, 
we can listen to God. But this can only happen if we have built a relationship with God. And that's why reading the Word of God every day, praying every day, worshipping God, and studying His Word are the essential things that we have to do so that when these trials come, we can face them knowing that it's all in God's hands. Yes, this is what happened with Job, and this is what happens to many people from day to day around the world. Their lives have been turned upside down by the sudden trials that have visited them. And it is at this time that they can reflect on what took place in Job's lives, how he responded to it, and how we can respond to it in like manner. Amen. came to praise, 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 and love the Lord, my hands I raise, 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 I'm singing all my favorite tunes, 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 give me some space for all my moves, 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 cause it goes up and up and up, it goes up and Gospel of Mark. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, 
Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. In our first reading from Genesis, God has created Adam, but he decides that it is not good for him to be alone. Why? God himself is love, a love between the Father and the Son, shared in the Holy Spirit. God made us in his image, so we also need to be connected to others in love and friendship and closeness. We see this in the first reading when God makes a woman, Eve, from Adam's rib, and Adam rejoices. This one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Men and women are called to a special type of closeness in marriage. In the Gospel, the Pharisees test Jesus by asking him, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? Even though Jewish law allowed for divorce, Jesus says, What God has joined together, no human being must separate. Marriage is more than two people making a promise. It's a bond sealed by God. Jesus calls man and woman one flesh because they are so close that they could not be separated. Jesus makes marriage a sacrament. He gives married people the grace to help each other become holy in their marriage and family life. Marriage is a vocation, a calling from God. There are other vocations, such as religious life or the priesthood, but all vocations are important and part of God's plan. We all have something to look forward to in waiting for God's call and in finding out what He has planned for us.
Session Form C, found on page 108. With all our hearts and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the peace and welfare of the world, for the witness and work of the church, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and all ministers of God's word and sacraments, that they may be filled with truth and love and be found without pause at the Lord's coming. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of the nations and for those in authority among us, that they may serve justice and promote the freedom and dignity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, and for all who labor in the cause of human liberation and fulfillment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from the ravages of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and proper use of God's creation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion on us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O Lord of love, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray, O God, our King, by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, on the first day of the week, you conquered sin, put death to flight, and give us the hope of everlasting life. Redeem all our days by this victory. Forgive our sins, banish our fears, and make us bold to praise you and to do your will and steal us to wait for the consummation of your kingdom on the last great day through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be holy years, utterly dedicated unto you, and then use us, we pray, you as you will. And always to your glory and the welfare of your people through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to thank Nikisha Reed for doing our readings for us today. Please have a spirit-filled week as we continue our program Sunday morning meditations next week, God's willing, at the same time. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
Oh. Uh...